A funny thing called business is sponsored by Sutton Park Radio, who are at the heart of the royal town of Sutton Coalfield, sharing all things community, how we live, work and transact with businesses in the area and connecting us together. If you want to promote your business to the residents and businesses of the Sutton Coalfield area, you can advertise for free until Christmas 2022. Check out Sutton Park Radio for more information. Find them on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, Sutton Park Radio, in the heart of your community. Welcome to a funny thing called business for business owners with over 30 years collective experience under our belts share the capers and triumphs of running a small business and how we now avoid perilous customer chaos and pitfalls. I'm Claire Worley. We also have Darren Langley, Kate Curry, Pete Morgan. Welcome my <laughs> lovely people. So <laughs> this month we are talking about planning and planning palavers. Mm. So I'm sure between us we all can share some funny stories about how we plan and it hasn't quite gone there. So let's kick it off with, um, well, what's your favourite memory or experience that you've had in your journey to this point around planning? Pete, why don't you share first? Well, the one that always comes to mind is because as well as doing podcast stuff, I do media training and I'd agreed to do some media training and we said, yeah, okay, it's going to be the, you know, 6th of April. That's when we're going to do it. Really big session. Uh, you know, we'll really get into it. It was going to need a bit of work uh, to do on my part, but yeah, 6th, 6th of April, that's when we're going to do it. And... Uh, We'd agreed this kind of in January, sent out a Zoom link, kind of well in advance, 6th of March, and I get a notification that someone's logged into your Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I might be just testing the link. I'll just, let me just check the emails that we've sent. No, no, we'd agreed the 6th of March, not the 6th of April at all. So... <gasps> And my heart's going now just thinking about yeah. it. Uh, so I log on to this Zoom call to be greeted by this team. Oh, that's horrifying. And it is. I remember, I distinctly remember sweating. Yeah. Oh. Of, okay, okay, okay. And that's all I could think was just, okay, 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 I can, okay, I can do. And I kind of... Oh. I, I'm sweating now just listening. I can feel the <laughs> So hate. I started going, I started kind of going through the, the spiel, the introduction and talking about it whilst feverishly kind of um, looking at the other folders thinking, okay, I can get some assets up and I can, you know, show this and do this kind of thing. And, uh, and after about 10, 15 minutes, I had to kind of say, <gasps> listen, I'm really, really sorry. And this is the thing. I had the chance to come clean, yeah. but no, no, I didn't. <laughs> and it's not that I made it, but I just kind of said, I'm really sorry. I just cannot find my notebook. <laughs> so can we just, is it all right if we just delay for half an hour oh. and then I'll come back? And in that half an hour, it was like, right, <laughs> <laughs> find out as much as you can, <laughs> sort of out the client, get that sorted and get it all put together. Uh, just just horrendous. Were yeah. they still there when you went back? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It all and it's it went off. Enough. It went off really well. No, we all kind of logged off and then we logged back on yeah. again. And it was it all went you know it all went really well. But even now, it's one of those that I'll wake up at like three in the morning yeah. <laughs> in a cold sweat thinking about it. So that's yeah, yeah. What that's... was the feedback like? It was such a professional presentation by Pete. <laughs> Well done. It, to be fair, the, the feedback was really good and better than I deserved for, for the work, but it was just... So now you'll never plan mm. another workshop in advance no, and just never. wing it every time. I literally just kind of think, I'll wait to see the notification come up on yeah. my emails 
and that's when I'll log on. Is it one of those things that you know when you have a night out that's not planned and it always yeah. turns out to be amazing? <laughs> yes. Maybe that applies Maybe to... Maybe that's what it is. Like media training. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a whole new perspective. <laughs> I, I used to run um, a workshop how to present and communicate with confidence and every single time the tech always never worked yeah, it yeah. never worked and it used to you know leave me in like a hot sweat you know with everybody sitting around the room those who'd arrive early and just watch me like dealing with this tech so eventually because it just failed every time i used to just have to incorporate it into the you know this is how to always plan but you know when technology doesn't work when you're presenting because you know yeah. how many times does the tech work uh-huh. when you present first time hmm. It's so rare, isn't it? I know, yeah. Oh, but that yeah. used to leave me sweating with people. <laughs> oh, so, Kate, what about your planning? <laughs> well, I'm sure I've had things like that happen, but I think I've like mentally blocked them out just for my own sanity. Because <laughs> it's just so awful, isn't it, when things go wrong? Um, planning's not my strong point, and actually, anyway, I don't think... I don't get super excited about it. I get more... I've got what I call Homer Simpson syndrome, where I'll be like, right, I know I need to be a bit more organised here, but oh, oh, look at that bird flying past the window. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm just so easily distracted by shiny things and or other stuff or things that I find a bit more exciting. But I think over time I have learned that, you know, you do really need to plan. But even um, (laughs) even when I plan, I still don't always, you know, it doesn't always go right. And uh, well, you came round to uh, mine the other day to do a coaching yes. session. I planned to make you a cup of tea. I'd, <laughs> even, I'd even boiled the kettle ready. And after you'd gone, about half an hour after you'd gone, I was like, I didn't offer a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, how awful is that? <laughs> you know, I was lying in bed at night going, oh, how am I going to have to, I'm have to explain this? I'll, I'll, I'll just come clean on the podcast. And, uh, <laughs> It's funny, I did leave your house very part. Did you? I was like, why am I saying that? She did not for me. But we kind of get into it and then you forget the plan. The well, that was it. out the window. Because you walked in and you sat down and went, so tell me about you. I was like, oh, all right then. <laughs> I completely forgot Brilliant. to offer you any good. refreshments. So sorry. Um, shocking. <laughs> I'll bring my own tea with me next time. Yeah, <laughs> you'll have to plan I your will. own cup of tea. Uh, you'll notice none of you have had to make your own tea. No, we get, oh, we, yes, yes. We get lovely beverages like here. Yeah. Yeah. Darren, mm. come on. Oh, sorry, I'm just drinking some tea. <laughs> Tell us about your plan in Palavas. Well, I mean, I, I don't have... I have a feeling there might be some. I no, no, I don't much. have any pla- planning palavas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have planning palavas because I'm not very good at planning, so <laughs> there's not very much to go wrong. I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty meticulous when it does come to planning presentations because I have winged it in the past yeah. and not, and it's gone badly wrong, but... Um, and I only ever really feel comfortable doing a presentation if I know what I'm talking about, which is rare. Um, but for me, in terms of kind of experience with planning, I kind of call back to, if we remember a couple of episodes ago of our podcast, there's an episode called Appy Apps. Where yes. We talk about yes. Apps. yes. Now, if you listen really carefully to that oh, yeah. episode, yeah, you've really I, I once or twice maybe casually mention a, a, an app that I mm. quite like. Oh, yeah. You have to yeah. listen very carefully. So yeah. Listen in. Uh, called Trello, which is my go-to world for for, for most things, um, and that's kind of where I plan. For instance, my business. You know, one, what I want to do with my business. It's great for tracking because you can do stuff. You can add tick lists. You mm-hmm. can just throw some notes in there, some ideas, uh, and then look at them later and think what a load of rubbish that is. But you know, so for me, on a positive note, I, I really like to have you know some sort of system, some sort of. Uh, process to to manage my my business planning at least and trello is it so yes yes those apps and i'm not paid by them either yeah but hopefully one day Darren Laggy, <laughs> uh, those apps are absolutely business changing aren't they yeah. for helping you plan feel like you're on top of it you know what you're doing if it's got a deadline um even if you know you might push those deadlines on but they are integral to your planning rather than to-do lists and post-it notes. Yeah, yeah, mine was just post-it notes (laughs) for years. (laughs) So what do you wish that you... Well, no, tell me, what do you do differently now when it comes to planning? So, yeah, you've got... You use technology, Darren, and, you know, there's the Trello board now. 
but what else do you do differently that you kind of perhaps didn't do five, ten years ago in your business? Um, well, I mean, when I started my business, I'd never really had a plan of oh. what the business was going to be or, you know, it was just kind of see how it goes. I'd say I probably haven't really changed that much uh, on that front, but I at least do have, you know, I'm kind of conscious of the idea that if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail, mm -hmm. like that adage. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm <laughs> doing anything particularly, diff particularly different apart from, you know, um, making notes and ideas. I mean, I, I think for me... But that I, in itself is a massive difference, isn't mm, it? It is, but I never really know what the end goal should be. So I don't know whether, you know... This is why I need some tips in terms of business uh, planning. How do you actually work out what it is that you want to achieve at the end of the plan? Because making the plan isn't that difficult because it's kind of like, it's a roadmap, isn't it? So you just got to tick off the steps to get to the, the eventual goal. But what if you don't know what that goal should be? Mm. Yeah. So that's a very big question. It is. Maybe that's a whole but podcast I, I, in itself. I, I think it's a really simple answer. It's just how do you want to feel at the end of it? And if you don't really tap into your feelings that much, that doesn't do much for you. I think what do you want to see at the end of it? Whether it's, you know, your kids in private school or, you know, more time off or whatever that is for you. Just pick that one thing or that one feeling that is at the end and then you plan becomes a bit easier well in fairness yeah and i think for probably for my private life i do that more because i think about oh. things like um you know i want to retire to spain or whatever see but you your know. business is feeding that so that's where your plan for your business changes uh -huh. but i'm making notes <clears throat> yeah <laughs> but it, it ties into my answer to this question because i always you know 14 years into my business i always made a plan but i never achieved the plan never achieved mm. it so i was just constantly oh I'll make a new plan but i know that i'm not going to get the results so why make it if you know you're not going to get the results because it was all about creating that vision of what i was trying to do but what i've done differently now to make the plan and achieve the plan is you know i worked with a coach right. who taught me how to create the right strategies and the right mindset around achieving that plan rather than just, oh, we'll, we'll see what happens. <coughs> and what I do differently now is check into that plan every day, every week, every month, and always check, yeah. is this step I'm going to take? And this is on is your it, Trello board, right? It's on my yeah, Asana okay. board, oh. sponsored by Metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> I raise your Trello and I give you a sauna. Um, so it's on there and like every step, is this getting me closer to my plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your big tip, uh, Claire's big tip is hire a business coach. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> hmm, there's well, a surprise. If, if, you're, if you've got a plan and it's not coming to fruition, then you need external yes. help, whether it's a business coach or whether it's a networking event, whether it's a workshop, you need other help. Pete. I think I've t I may have talked about this before that I was at a networking thing not long after start in the first 12 months of me starting the business and I sat next to this lovely woman who I've, I've spoken to since called Siobhan and she said um, so what's the the plan for the business what's what's oh. the end goal god that's such a big question and no one had ever event. asked me that before <clears throat> and I'd never and I was like uh, podcast <laughs> I've lost my notebook. I'll be back in half an hour. <laughs> okay. It really okay. I, it was just, all I could kind of go with po podcast. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what. What do you mean, Annette? And she was like, so are you, are, is the aim to kind of franchise it? Are you just oh, going she, to she was a business coach, and, wasn't she? Uh, no, she wasn't. Well, uh, oh, no, she's, not, she's a, a property um, investor coach. Oh, so okay. helps you she get into it. But it really was, and no one had ever asked me before, and that was the first time I thought, all right, do I need to have a, an end game plan? I'm barely started. <laughs> yeah. And I think in the past 12 months, it's been the first time I've thought, okay, what is the ultimate aim yeah. of, of the business, the ultimate goal of the business? But before then, no, no, just, you know. Crack but what's up. changed since then is kind of like what Darren said, of it's bringing in tools to help you do it. Mm -hmm. Because in the early days, it was just in my head. I, I, it was all in my head and that was fine. So I knew what was going on. And then it was the natural progression to post-it notes, 
So my office looked like some kind of child's craft area <laughs> with lots of markers and paper and things cut out and ripped up and, you know, different post-it notes, different coloured post-it notes. And then it was finding the thing and, you know, you keep your Trello, you keep your Asana. I'll oh. go with Evernote oh. <laughs> all day long. Gee, Thanks gee. very much, everybody. <laughs> so that's, that's what I use now. Uh, and since the last episode, I'm kind of using some freelancers as well. And it's been good to kind of share it with them of, right, this is, this is where we are with this. And this, this is, is the I'm, plan. That's the plan, yeah. Beautiful. So. Kate, what do you do differently? Well, I've, I've done a couple of um, like growth program courses and they've been like I'm sort of talking just now about very small plans, like trying to make a cup of tea for somebody. But plan, <laughs> planning can go all the way up to, as we've just been talking about, what's your end game and um, you know, where are you aiming at in 10 or 15 years time? And uh, one of the things I was always taught is you, you really have to start with the end in mind. So otherwise, how can you know, what, you know what, what's in your plan? How are you going to get there? And one of the exercises they told us to do, um, which was really interesting, is to sort of paint a vision of what the business looks like. Mm. And they were saying, even, right, what, what colour have you painted your skirting boards in your office? Um, you're looking out the window, what do you see? Oh, Look yes, down, what yes. pants are you wearing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and go into that level of detail, and it just paints a picture. And, um, and I did dig it out, actually, hoping for something really funny, but it really wasn't, so I'm not going to read it out. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, had you met any of those goals or plans? That well, yeah, what colour is your skirting board? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I didn't really, I think I've ever misread the brief, actually, because mine was all a bit sort of fluffy and just like, we're all just positive and creative and doing amazing things. Um, and it was, uh, but one of the things that was coming out in it is um, like collaborations and working together and creating this community of like-minded people, which I feel like I'm really achieving now with a, a great network of, um, you know, supporters and um collaborators and suppliers and clients and people who all want to sort of do the same you know pull in the same direction mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah that kind of is coming through already which is really interesting actually and i wonder if that's just been subliminally there in the back of my mind since i wrote that down like yes. two or three years ago yeah mm. and, and this is what i love about creating plans um it kind of leads me on to my next question of in one sentence what have you learned about yourself or you know your planning um in your business so for me it is about being really specific um even if it, you know it is down to just what can you see outside your window because if you get really specific with it you are much more likely to focus on those things and it's funny you talk about that view out your window because I just reread uh, yesterday something I'd written about four or five months ago that I wanted to see all like um, lots of greenery and nature out of my window. And this weekend I've moved my offices and guess what I can see outside my window? Oh. Lots of greenery <laughs> and nature. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, it just totally matched up to exactly that view that I wrote down three or four months ago. So mine mm. is be specific as you possibly can. Even if it feels silly, just don't worry about the house. Just write it down or think about it anyway. Darren, what about you? Yeah. What have you um, learned? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I mean, I've learned that when it comes to the actual projects that I do that you need to have a plan for those mm -hmm. uh, in the form of really you know kind of a I don't know, I think I've spoken about it before but a, a form of a, a process really where you know if you have something that is structured a plan for each stage in in the process of uh, developing a website in my case or whatever it might be the you can keep the client on track more because they understand what the process is and what the, there is a you know that there is an organization there you're not just kind of skipping from one step to the next and winging it um so yeah i think for me having a plan for individual processes and projects and how you kind of play those through so if you've got a plan for your clients why wouldn't you have a plan for your business and you know this is a rhetorical <laughs> question just to put it out there you know we want our clients experiences to be brilliant which is great but let's make our experiences brilliant as well i mean i do have a you know a, a 
personal plan and I have it Good. on my Trello board. Uh, and I have each card is like a year. So I have 2021, 2022, mm-hmm. all the way through to retirement. So I'm hoping to live that long. Um, and maybe I should put some extra years in just to make sure that I'm kind of planning for post-retirement. But um, it's yes. kind of like each year, what do I want to achieve, you know, but in, in specific holidays or particular oh, that's things interesting. That's yeah yeah i put even like mm. my kids ages so i can count down to when they're 18 and they're <laughs> off to university <laughs> and i can have my life back and then uh no, and then um you know it but it does kind of make mean that every year i kind of can look at next year's plan yeah. what i put down previously yeah. and think oh yeah this is the year we're supposed to go on on holiday to yeah. such and such and you know it's kind of little things like that mm-hmm. and obviously planning accordingly financially to kind of yeah deliver those as well i think it's really useful as well to just keep looking back on those plans because even though you know you might have set that plan for 2021 it doesn't mean that you you know you have to achieve that Mm. sometimes it takes a couple more years and that's fine yeah yeah. you know steve jobs wanted to get um you know floated on the stock market he thought it was going to take him two years it took him seven do you think he was kicking himself no 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 sat at home having a money fight (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he was just fanning himself exactly. with hundreds. So, Pete, what have you, uh, what have you learned? My, the, the big thing was is that my memory is nowhere near as good as mm-hmm. I thought it was. Mm-hmm. That's been my thing regarding planning. I don't plan to the level that that Darren does to that, but it is. And again, you kind of put your finger on it. Is <laughs> I do lots of planning for clients when they're starting. It's right, okay. So this is what we need to be looking at. This is, we need to source this and make sure this is all working, you know, and, and we kind of plan how long we're going to be working together, what we think the downloads will be doing for their particular podcast, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but for the business now, there's nothing. It's just kind of, right, let's just get to the end of the year and still be in business and we'll count that as a win. Uh, you know, that's... Does that not count as a plan? Because that's, that's like my business Oh, to be plan. fair, that is, you know, that is a plan, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Don't go bust. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. Um, my learnings um, is that planning is absolutely essential if you want to grow your business. Whether no, you that's like a it. good answer. You see, <laughs> or I'm not. not saying it's not essential. I'm just saying I don't do it. No, it is absolutely essential. And if you take your eye off the ball, with what, which I feel like I, I do frequently, um, but, you know, if I do take, when I do take my eye off the ball, I, I'm like, well, what, what's my next decision going to be? And, for, and it's impossible to make the right choices because... You know how do how do you know where you're going next and what your next steps should be? So you you've got to keep it at the forefront of your mind. So my learnings are: um, don't be a magpie, don't mm. keep going after shiny things, um, <laughs> and uh, make sure that you always like focused on your on your end goal. Because um, I I definitely don't want to be like a 85 year old graphic designer still trying to do you want me to make it all funky for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to, I've got to get out before then. <laughs> yes, I think you do. Oh my god! Hey, Kate, Kate, I think you should continue on with your biggest challenge around right now, then, because perhaps it is that you know going after bright, shiny objects, or you know sometimes losing your focus. Yeah, I do really lose my focus, and I think, um, and I did, I did actually write a three-year business growth plan about. Five years ago. Did you do it in the old woman voice? Uh, no. Uh, 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 no. Did, oh, did you do it in the posh woman voice? <laughs> well, I was trying to, yeah. yeah. Just like, let me raise my game a little bit. Um, and I remember writing it and just thinking, none of these figures I will ever achieve. You know, I'm never going to achieve these things. But, you know, we were really encouraged to be bold and, you know, just... And actually, I think my figures for year two, I think I might actually be achieving them now, which is, you know, you know, as we were saying earlier, it's better sort of late mm. than never. So mm. it's good to be bold because if I hadn't yeah. done that and if I'd been a bit more realistic, maybe I wouldn't be doing quite so well with it now. So, um, yeah, so that, that's, those are my learnings. So that's quite a rambling answer, isn't it? No, it was, good. It was a really good answer. It was top of the class answer, I think. <laughs> Pete. I didn't know they were grades. <laughs> no, I didn't either. I know. <laughs> Clearly, we would not be told about this. Yeah. Never get any. <laughs> Pete, what's your biggest challenge with planning? Uh, I, I think it, it's it's doing it. It's because the the mental block I have, which I mentioned earlier on, is 
it's things I, there is no way i can predict where the business will be in 12 months in six months in three months what i need to get over or i need to get back to a thinking that i used to have when i worked in radio full time so when we did a breakfast show we planned out a breakfast mm. show and you plan it on the basis that it's probably not you're not going to execute that plan yeah. because some other news will come about yeah. and that is now your show that's now your plan um and i need to kind of go back to that thinking of plan for the business anyway uh and like you say just kind of put the goals in place so that you you know you do have a name there is a direction rather mm -hmm. than you just kind of aimlessly treading water yeah. really um, so it's, it's kind of getting back to that way of thinking of make the plan anyway, even though, you know, it's not likely to not happen. Not because... Not in that, not in that not exact Not in that failing way. sense, yeah. But it could just be, you don't know what the... So if I'd have made a plan before the pandemic, it would have, you know, maybe kind of double the number of clients yeah. that I got or kind of, you know, but yeah. the, the business has grown exponentially over the past yeah. 18 months. And there's no way I could have predicted it. So in some ways, it, it, it it's exceeded any kind of plan I would have made. Um, but it's kind of doing the next plan. Now. Yeah. It's not teaching you that not planning works. Though. It really isn't. <laughs> no, because it's, it's not. Because it, it's uh, there. there's no plan. Because now, obviously, everything's gone back to normal. People have, have started the, the natural life cycle of certain podcasts are coming to an end. Um, but there's no plan to progress and get more and to maybe double the business again, mm -hmm. which is absolutely within doable. our reach. Absolutely doable. Um, but there's no plan in place yeah. to do it. I suppose the plan is the plan. The plan can change and adapt, yeah. but the end goal stays the same. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you, sometimes yeah. the end goal changes as well because yeah. you know pandemics and children and all sorts of different forces outside mm. can make the plan change but you're just tweaking and adapting along the way i think with the plan that's yeah. why you know the checking in with it um what about you darren what well i think it's say? interesting yeah what, what you're saying there because i think the flexibility of a plan is is really important that it's not written in stone maybe it's just written in trello um <laughs> or a but it's keeping the motive out yeah or whatever note yes i suppose but it's keeping the motivation, isn't it? So, uh, you know, having the flexibility, but then not kind of chopping and changing your mind all the time, which is kind mm -hmm. of where I struggle a little bit because some, some, as I say, you know, in terms of like the end goal for my business, some some days I want world domination and the next day I just want a lifestyle business that, you know, <laughs> yeah. take some time off. So, yeah, so, you know, it's having the flexibility is good to a point, but I think it's kind of having the motivation to, to stay focused on the plan mm -hmm. and th that it still excites you because if if the end goal or you know changes in terms of you know if you lose interest in it if you think oh actually no I don't want world domination anymore I just want to sit and do a bit of web design here and there then obviously you know it's kind of keeping track of what it is that you actually want to do and, mm -hmm. and the, where your where your motivation lies. Mm -hmm. But I think we all we all have those cycles in business as well, don't we? Where every other week, you know, is it? world Same as domination, me. and then oh, you know, perhaps I just want to chill. Mm. Um, one of my challenges has been staying in faith that everything is going to work out just as I plan it yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it always does. But sometimes it just takes longer than others. Yeah. And sometimes when that period of time goes on, I'm like, oh, I've not met that goal yet. I'm not, you know, that's when I can feel those niggles start to mm. come in. But I've, you know, I've got strategies to help deal with those. But that is definitely mm. one of my biggest challenges, staying in faith, that all is working out exactly. Because that's where it kind of dips in your motivation if you yeah. start to see some negativity creep in there. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's lift the topic a little bit. Let's talk about some silver linings. And can I share first? <laughs> so, what 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 about silver linings when it comes to planning? And I have to say, Pete has just um, exacerbated this silver lining this morning uh, because my uh, positives from planning is all about stationery. 
If I plan more, I get to buy more journals, mm. more belt tip <laughs> pens, sparkly pens, you know, um, highlighters. I just get to increase my stationery and all the different <laughs> beautiful stuff I can have on my desk and that surrounds me to help me plan. I know there are so many stationary geeks, though, I know. Perhaps not in this room. No, no. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting no, from body I love, language. I love a good pen and a good journal. Yeah. Love them. Well, so. see, Pete, this is your encouragement then for, for planning. I know, you I know. You get to use this stuff on a daily basis and, you know, look at it. So, Kate, what are your silver linings? Can you beat my station? <laughs> um. Well, I'm not. I'm not a natural planner, but my silver lining is I. I do have people around me that are. <laughs> so that really helps me. My my goal is to be ten percent Claire. If I, <laughs> if I could be ten percent Claire, I'll have nailed it. <laughs> have you got a plan for that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Buy need some a, more journals. New, yeah. I need yeah. a new <laughs> journal for that. New pens. Give me a stationary shopping list. <laughs> I'll go and buy ten percent of it. Yeah. <laughs> So, Darren, what are your silver linings? Well, my silver linings really, I suppose, is kind of the reverse of what I was saying about motivation, where your motivation wanes and all that kind of stuff. The silver lining is when you have a plan and you're feeling a bit in a dip, you can look at that plan and go, oh, yes, that's what I was supposed to be yeah. doing. And that keeps me on on track. And what is the end goal again? Because I've forgotten. Oh, yeah, that's it. And it's like, yeah, yeah and then you kind of feel that, that motivation. Yeah, and, and I achieved that. And yeah. I achieved that from it. So when I'm looking at my personal plan and I see I'm going on holiday next year, I think, yeah, great. That's, you know, so <laughs> having a, yeah, I, I'd have forgotten about it otherwise, you know. So having having a plan gives you something to kind of refer back to and remind yourself why it is that you're doing what you're doing mm. when you're kind of feeling a bit of a low ebb yeah. and what the end goal is. So Good. Yeah. Pete? I think my silver lining is, uh, as it stands at the moment, not necessarily going forward, is the fact that I've been quite lucky by not planning that that so mm. you know like a couple of the, things this, that we've said this one makes me very nervous this <laughs> answer makes me very nervous Pete. <laughs> but like kate said do you think that's maybe you know that the the tip is not to plan i don't think that is i think that i should plan <laughs> but as it stands at the moment my silver lining is i've been very lucky when i've not planned you know why it yeah. is that you haven't planned because it's because you use Evernote and not Trello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Outside. <laughs> right now. So, yeah. So, I think that's that's probably the, 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 the silver lining. And also, I know we've all joked about it, but that there are so many things out there for free that mm. you can use and, you know, that are online that you can, you know, you can do that. And Evernote's slightly cheaper. <laughs> than, uh, than and Asana. So I honestly don't know, to be honest, but I think that is a definite silver lining for everyone of the just the the breadth of stuff that's available to mm. use. Yeah, and I think it's interesting as well. You know, your business was um, <clears throat> I don't know what the right word in here is. You know, failing. No, <laughs> it was it was well positioned during the yeah, pandemic absolutely. because you know that was you know it's a platform where people could use it you know remotely. Um, there were businesses that if they didn't have a plan during that pandemic, oh, yeah. you know, if, that was not good. No. Okay. So uh, thank you, guys. That was a very interesting discussion. So for our listeners, please share, subscribe and review so our fellow business owners can enjoy, be inspired and always keep focused on the fun side of business too. <laughs> This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast.